This is the new 2020 Toyota Corolla Altis G. This is a new model from the ground up. It's based on a new platform called the TNGA platform or Toyota New Global Architecture. This is the G variant which is the cheapest automatic variant that you can get. Is it worth its 1.1 million peso price tag? Let's find out. The new Altis comes in five variants. The base model is the E, which only comes with a manual transmission. The most expensive is a hybrid variant with Toyota's safety sense. It is the first time that Toyota will be introducing active safety features like radar cruise control locally. So I'm looking forward to checking out that variant. The design of the new Altis looks a lot less conservative compared to the last model. You have a lot more cuts, you have a lot more creases, and you have a lot more swooping lines. The most aggressive angle is here at the front. The most obvious difference here in the front is the massive grille. Although the actual grille itself is not as big as it looks. Then you have these fake inlets on the sides of the bumper. This G variant doesn't have fog lamps, but there are provisions for installing aftermarket fog lamps. The new headlamps look squintier. They have this cascading design, which I think looks pretty good. It has this subtle shoulder line that runs from the front fender to the daylight. Speaking of the taillights, I think they look pretty good. They remind me of the taillights of the Lexus RC, turned upside down. It has a chrome garnish connecting the two tail lamps. The Altus G comes with 16 inch wheels and it has 4 wheel disc brakes. Overall, it's not a bad looking car. From the outside at least, it doesn't look like a stripped down variant. Okay, so this is the interior of the Altis. Um, compared to the Vios, you have a lot more soft touch materials here. This is soft touch. This is also soft touch. Also this. <coughs> this. This is fabric. It has fabric seats. Uh, the steering is, it seems to be covered in synthetic, le synthetic leather. Over here you have controls for your infotainment. You don't have cruise control. You have single zone climate control. Um, where are the USB ports, man? Oh, that's interesting. I can't find the USB ports. I don't see anything. So, oh, there's one USB port over here. You have two cup holders. You have a manual handbrake. Uh, you have a bit of storage over here for your phone. A decently sized glove box. Okay, one of the first things that stood out to me was this uh, head unit or at least the, the way it's based here.
Toyota uses the same aftermarket wooden head unit on almost all of their cars and it's this is that same head unit and you can see it's not very well integrated into the dashboard you have so much bezel over here you have bezel over here and then you have bezel on the unit itself and then when you look at it from the side it looks like a it looks like a CRT TV or a microwave you don't get a push start button you get a keyhole Okay, there is noticeably more legroom compared to the Vios. Also headroom. If I sit straight up on the Vios, my head brushes against the roof. On this car, I have a little bit more space, a little bit more headroom. Say I have about this much headroom. Also, unlike the Vios, you get two air vents over here. And... You don't get any 12 volt outlets or USB ports. You have a center armrest with two cup holders. And that's it. Compared to the Vios, the interior of the Altis looks a lot nicer, of course. But compared to other cars in the price bracket, like the Civic and the Kia Forte, the interior of the Altis looks a bit bland in my opinion. Toyota went for a more minimalistic design on their interior. There are times when minimalism works, but there are also times when it just makes the car look plain. This is more a case of the latter. And the badly integrated head unit doesn't help at all. The Altus G is powered by a 1.6 liter 4 cylinder naturally aspirated gasoline engine, which produces 121 horsepower and 153 newton meters of torque. It's a fully aluminum engine and it has a timing chain instead of a timing belt. For better longevity. It is coupled to a CVT transmission. The car has a McPherson strut suspension at the front, which is expected. What is not expected is that it now has independent suspension at the back. The Altus G doesn't have a lot of driver aids and it doesn't have a lot of active safety features it doesn't have a backup camera it doesn't have parking sensors and it doesn't have cruise control but i guess that's forgivable for a for a semi-entry level variant of the car if you do step up to the top of the line hybrid variant you get a lot more active safety features like radar cruise control Lane Keep Assist and Blind Spot Monitoring. The Altus G has 7 airbags though, which I think is at least one more than the Civic. The Toyota Altus G is a decent car. I can't really say that it's better than the competition in terms of features and design. But it has the Toyota badge, which comes with a few perks. According to some people, Toyota is more reliable, it has better resale value, and Toyota has better aftermarket service. That's something that I can neither confirm nor deny, but it's probably something that's worth noting. I think the show stealer though is the top of the line hybrid variant. It has more active safety features and driver aids than the Civic. And compared to the Mazda 3, the Altis is a hybrid, so it's more fuel efficient and more environmentally friendly. At 1.5 million pesos, I think the hybrid variant will give the competition a good run for its money.
Oh, 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 oh,